Let's take a look at adding a Windows Presentation Framework GUI to your PowerShell script. So before we get started, this is the script that I'll be adding a GUI to. All it does is it prompts for a directory name, and then if it exists, it removes it. So there we go. The first true, it existed before it was removed, and then the false just means it was uh, didn't no longer existed after it was removed. So the only prerequisite to be able to use the Windows Presentation Framework in PowerShell is to make sure we add that type into our session. So we use the add type commandlet and give it the assembly name of presentation framework. Go ahead and add that in. So the process of creating a window using the Windows presentation framework consists of a couple of steps. Uh, the first one is we have to write the XAML code. So this is the markup language that Windows presentation framework uses. So to create a window, which is the base object here, uh, we use the window tag. And then we need to give it a couple of uh, default properties. So it's these lines 32 and 33. And then 34, I'm naming the window, window. Keeping it dead simple. And then to actually load that window, we have to read the XAML creating an XML node reader. And then load that using an XAML reader specifically and passing it to the window variable. And then of course using the show dialog method on that window. So running this, we get the most basic form that you could imagine. Actually, there's nothing exciting at all, except for the window itself. So let's look at adding some controls to it. So the Windows Presentation Framework, to be able to add controls to it, it has a couple of layouts that you can use. So I'll be demoing the grid layout in this case, because it's really simple to use, in my opinion. I've got my window here. I've got the properties of the window, and then I'm creating a grid. And I'm going to be really simple and call this grid. If you have more than one grid, you probably want to call it something different. Uh, but for now, we're going to call this grid. And so here on lines 52, I'm creating the row definitions. So 53 and 54, I have two rows and this set the height to auto. So the height will depend on the controls that are inside of that row. And same thing for the column definitions on line 56. So 50, 57, 58 just means there's two columns and the width are auto. So it depends on the controls inside of them. And so with that grid in there, if we look at this window, we will now see a grid, which is actually nothing because there's no controls in it yet. So let's add some. So the first thing we'll add is we'll just throw in a text box. So we've got, we got our window uh, definitions, our grid here, and then we're adding a text box. So you notice that this is inside of the grid tags. So I'm using the text box tag, giving it a name, giving it a width of 150 and leaving the height to be whatever the default height is and putting it in column zero, row zero. So that's where this grid.column and grid.row come into play. So we'll go ahead and run this code. We'll now see that we have a text box that we can type in. doesn't do anything yet. <laughs> so let's add some other controls. So let's add the, those buttons that we're going to need. So again, here I've got the window, I've got the grid, I've got the text box. Uh, and here are some buttons. So we use the button tag. And in this case, I'm giving it the names of validate button for lines 123 and remove button for line 128. Uh, and this is important to give it a descriptive name. You'll see here in a bit why. Uh, and then the content property, this is the text that will display on the button. And then for validate button, I'm putting this in column one, row zero. And for the remove button, column zero, row one. So if we run this code, we'll now get a text box, a remove button, and a validate button. And you'll notice that the remove button is a lot wider than the validate button. That is because by default, the controls will take up the entirety of the space available to them. So in this case, the text box, is, we set the width to be 150. So a column zero has now has a width of 150 because that's what the width of the largest control inside of it. And so the remove button uh, inherits that width and sets it to 150. But of course, if we click on these buttons, nothing actually happens because we haven't added actions to them. So let's take a look at adding actions to these buttons. So here, we're not changing that XAML at all. So I've got it just commented out here. Um, but we are going to grab those buttons. So using the window object, we can use the find name method and give it the name of the object that we want to find. In this case, I'm grabbing the button, remove button, 
and path text box and assigning each of those to a descriptive variable. And to add a click to a button, you use the button dot add underscore click and use open parens and curly brackets. Uh, and the curly brackets are there because this is a script block. And in this case for the validate button, I'm just saying if the text that is in the path text box, if that doesn't is not a path, then just remove all the text out of there because we don't we only care if it's a path. And then if the remove button is clicked, we're going to say that if there is text and the text is a path, we're going to remove it. And then of course the show dialog option here. So we run this code, we get the same windows before, but in this case we can type in a path. And if we validate that, you'll notice that that goes away because that path does not exist. But if we put in a path that does exist and hit validate, it stays there. And then we can click the remove button and then try to validate again, it no longer exists. So we know that remove button works. Cool, so now we have a working form, it just looks kind of funky. So let, let's clean this up, make it look a little better with some final touches. So for our final touches here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna add in a couple of additional properties. So I'm giving the window a title. So I'm setting the title to be folder window. And I'm also telling it to auto size the width and height of the window here with the size to content property. So this will just set the width and height of the window relative to the controls inside of the window itself. And then for the our grid, I'm adding in two additional rows and additional column. And you'll see why here in a second. And this third row here, I've set it to a certain height. And um, this is to get some spacing. Because if there's nothing, if there are no controls in a row, the row won't have any height. Uh, and for the text box here, I'm setting the margin to 10. And this just means that there will be 10 pixel spacer around the path text box where nothing can be. So it'll actually make the path text box a little smaller. Uh, but of course the width will still be 150. Um, and I'm setting the margin here on all the buttons to be 10 and adding in a width to the button. So I'm gonna make all the buttons have the same width of 50 and keep a margin of 10 on them. And here I'm introducing a stack panel into my window. And a stack panel is a layout that will take the controls that you insert into it and spread them out either vertically or horizontally. And by default, it's vertically. So I'm setting the stack panel orientation to be horizontal here on line 248. And then I'm adding this to the column zero and row three. So all the way down at the bottom and setting the column span to be two. So this will span from column zero to column one and two as well. So it'll, it'll expand out to all of the columns because we only have three of them. And for the horizontal alignment, I'm setting this to be center. So this could be left, right, or center. And this just means that all of the controls you add to it will spread out from the center. So I'm gonna add two buttons here. I'm gonna add an okay button. And to make the window recognize this as the OK button, I need to set the is default to be true. And then of course, adding in the content of the button, setting the width to 50 and the margin to 10. And you notice that all of my buttons are width 50. This is just to keep them all standard. And for the window to recognize the cancel button here on line 260 as the cancel button, set the is cancel to true. And then of course, set the content to cancel and the width to our standard of 50 and margin of 10. And the rest of the code, this code down here is just the same as from before. So I'm gonna go ahead and run this XAML. And now we have a really nicely formatted window. And you notice that the path text box and the buttons all have nice space around them, as well as there's this empty row that we can't actually see, but it has a height of 23, meaning that there's a space from our, our action buttons and our okay and cancel buttons. So one last thing to mention is when you're writing your XAML is it is case sensitive. So be very careful with that. Uh, if you screw something up, it can be really hard to troubleshoot it. So just remember that as well. But that is how you create a simple GUI using Windows Presentation Framework in PowerShell.